I'm Kirsch Mackey. So I've got a question for you. How many times have you designed a printed circuit board and you're not quite sure that it will actually work the first time, right? Maybe the second time or third time, but not quite the first. I'm guilty of this. I do this a lot of times. Actually, every PCB I've ever designed, I was just not that confident that it would work the first time. And this is not good, but at least we're aware that just because we design a board with rules of thumb and proper guidelines and everything, we're at least aware that that doesn't mean it will work necessarily. Luckily, we have software tools today that can help us increase our confidence that the board will actually work, at least the second time around, but maybe even the first time. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to import a design from Altium Designer into Sigurdi Aurora so we can do a coupling analysis and also an impedance analysis. Doing these kinds of analyses will help us increase the likelihood that our board will work right the first time. All right, let's get into it. So what's great about Sigurdi Aurora is all I need to do is go to Altium Designer, save my file as a ASCII file. To do that, you just need to right click on the PCB, choose save as, and then set it to the PCB ASCII option when you save it. Then you would click save. Now I recommend putting the word underscore ASCII, A-S-C-I-I, -I, at the end of your PCB file name, just so we know that that one is ASCII. Make sure you close Altium before you attempt the import into Sigurdi Aurora. In Sigurdi, you want to go to your file, import option, and then choose Altium PCB, then click yes. Next, select your board, then navigate to the folder with the PCB. Make sure you choose the ASCII saved version of the PCB. Once you selected it, just do your import. You don't have to choose anything other than the default options and it will import everything. Just wait for it. All right, so here's what I really like about Sigurdi Aurora. I don't need to make any adjustments once I import the board even though it's coming from a different software, such as Altium in this case. Now, in Sigurdi Aurora, let's perform several signal integrity and power integrity simulations by walking through the workflows. First, we want to perform impedance analysis. So we're going to analyze the design and we'll use the impedance workflow. This is going to look at impedance discontinuities in your traces that could cause signal integrity issues. You can also detect and model coplanar traces, and that's very cool. Then you just have to start your analysis. Now, Sigurdi Aurora just turns through the design nets there, just doing all the impedance calculations. It's really cool to look at. All right, once it's done, we can view the results in an impedance table. This provides detailed information on the nets and impedance information. So if we look at the results, it lets us know our impedance hotspots, so to speak. What we can do here is click on your maximum impedance, go through the list, see what has the highest impedance on your board design. You can click on each net and just go through net to net. For instance, this is a hotspot. So if we go in our cap VDD SRAM MPU, that net has uh, some high impedance. Our clock out to signal net has high impedance. If you look at the list at the bottom here, we can see more details on the impedance. So if you double click on here, it takes you straight to the net. Really like that. And we see the layer that it's on, the inductance, so technically the loop inductance, and the capacitance. 
of that trace, also the length. So yeah, I can just go through here and analyze and look at each of the traces that have the high impedance, those uh, impedances I just don't want, and then adjust them accordingly. So for instance, if we look at clock out and only filter for the bottom layer, then we can see that this needs some fixing. Yeah, because its impedance is in the red zone. We don't want that. We want to be more so in the blue zone. How I would fix this is to look at options like widening the trace if possible to reduce the impedance. With the impedance vision view, this really helps to isolate the problem graphically. So for some of these traces, you see them in red, their impedance is a bit high. And oftentimes I see this when we have traces going over gaps. So I would also have traces not go over gaps in the design. So take a look at that and try to avoid gaps. The running over of a gap or a blank or void in the PCB can significantly increase the impedance and EMI effects in any particular area. Next, let's look at the coupling analysis. The coupling analysis is going to look at coupling among traces on your board that will affect the signal quality. Coupling analysis really shows you which signals are experiencing crosstalk and why. If crosstalk is bad enough on your PCB, you can see really strange signal behavior on your traces. So I use the coupling analysis tool to find any pesky aggressive signal traces that might cause my board not to work properly. And then I fix them as needed by spacing them far apart. Like in the impedance analysis, results can be viewed in the coupling table or coupling vision. And in the coupling table, we see just how much each signal aggressor trace is affecting nearby victim traces. This is extremely convenient because I don't have to rely just on rules of thumb in my PCB layout, like the three widths rule. Instead, I can quickly find problematic aggressor traces, then move them away from other victim traces that are being affected. Also note that moving traces apart doesn't just apply to the same signal layers, but to adjacent signal layers in the vertical axis of the PCB. Note that coupling of two signal traces increases the longer those traces run adjacent to one another. So if you can't pull them far enough apart sometimes, you can at least reduce the distance for how long they run parallel to one another to decrease the coupling. And notice how these two break off after they kept going parallel to one another for a long enough distance. Performing signal integrity analysis in your design is essential to ensure the design functions as you thought and reduces the likelihood of redesigns. Awesome. So that's why I like Sigrid Aurora so much because I can import a design from any other software tool, especially Altium, working back and forth between them. It's just easy and convenient to know with higher confidence that your board will most likely work. So that's great. Performing signal integrity analysis in your design is essential to ensure the design functions as you thought and reduces the likelihood of redesigns.